Hey everybody, welcome to Paratruth Radio right here on Blog Talk Radio. My name is Justin. And I'm Eric. And uh, I do know that today is the Super Bowl, guys, but tonight we have the Fairy Bowl. Fairies! <laughs> so tonight we'll be talking about fairies. Uh, if you don't know what fairies are, uh, they are little Creatures, at least that's what they are portrayed as, are almost uh, insect-sized creatures that have wings that kind of look like a butterfly. Some look like a fly's wings. Um, many different interpretations of of these. I don't know if you would call them cryptids, um, spirits, whatever um, you want to call them. From what I've come across uh, the majority of which are considered a form of spirit uh, as opposed to a cryptid. Um, I know that in certain cases, like the origins of the fairy in particular are like pretty unclear, but I know that it has been perceived in a number of different lights, uh, one being uh, dead per se, uh, so I'm guessing, like, in regards to a uh, roaming spirit, a deceased person, I assume. Um, yeah. A form of demon, uh, which seems pretty common, uh, or just a species altogether that's different from uh, humans or angels, which I guess could go along the cryptid aspect. But uh, based on just the different legends, uh, in the old folklore, it seems like they're much more of a spiritual nature as opposed to actual physical beings. Yeah, the one legend that I came across was some people even think that they are human, that uh, they were children that were <laughs> hidden away from God who um, ended up creating their own civilization. And people were thinking them to be magical creatures and not of flesh and blood. <clears throat> so, um, if you guys have never heard of fairies, I mean, they're riddled in fiction and fairy tale, uh, usually mischievous in nature. Uh, some of them have also been supposedly known as demoted pagan Deities, they were in Greek and uh, Roman mythology as nymphs or tree spirits. Um, yeah, they also are um, in Irish folklore, uh, call, they are also called the Sati, um, which is actually kind of related to the Banshee, sort of. Um, so through the uh the research here eric um like in the christian mythology what what is your intake on on the research compared to what you believe um well i was actually just current reading that as you're talking cuz i just come across it um <clears throat> I mean, I guess in according to the Christian mythology, they've been uh, a class of demoted angels, which would assume that they were fallen angels, much like right. we look at Lucifer, you know, the rest of the demons. Um, and so, I guess, like, it's not so much that these demons became fairies per se. Like, it's not like they just shrunk down in size or actually... Right, and, yeah. Uh, originally, they weren't even considered small creatures. They were actually... Um, they were actually... Uh, I was I actually read it earlier and I'm trying to find it again. Because they were much bigger in original folklore. Uh, I can't remember if they were much larger than uh, simple humans. But they... <clears throat> were often depicted as being this, like the same size of humanoid or angelic 
uh, right, being yeah. as opposed to these tiny creatures. But in regards to the Christian mythology, I think often, I, I mean, I think they're depicted as or more so demonic type things overall, especially when you look at the original folklore behind it, because today fairies have been, are, are kind of taken lighthearted ever since, I mean, let's face it, you think of Tinkerbell and all the Disney characters, the fairies. Right. That's what people yeah. think of when they think of fairies or any of these little tar- cartoon characters. Uh, but originally, they were considered deceitful, uh, mal, uh, yeah, deceitful creatures that would do all kinds of different things to kind of trick people and perform different, uh, well, tricks on them and stuff like that, and mislead them. And they purposely try to mislead people according to the folklore and stuff like that. So it's, you know, when you look at that and then you look compared to the Christian aspect of what demons are and they kind of run along the same lines there in which they're uh, deceivers and tricksters and constantly doing everything they can to manipulate things uh, for their own greater purpose as opposed to helping people, if you will. Mm. Well, is there anything ever in scripture, and this is mostly because I don't know all of scripture, where fallen angels got caught in the middle where they weren't allowed in hell because they weren't bad enough, but they were fallen angels. Is there anything like that? Or is this just people's theories of what, what they could be? It's all people's theories. When you, when you look at the scriptures, I mean, it talks about, uh, certain spirits being trapped or imprisoned in hell. But, um, See, this is the thing. A lot of people think that demons were cast into hell and that they themselves control hell, which isn't the case. Uh, in fact, and I think there's a lot of pe- different people will uh, argue this point, but um, I think when angels are cast out of heaven, they're thrown to earth to await the final judgment and then be cast into hell. Um, because if when they go to hell they're meant to be tormented for eternity from there on. Uh, mm. God has special angels that are within, that are in hell. And, you know, I, I think it, that's not biblical, but hell is designed for Satan and his angels originally. Uh, not a place to keep them where they can come and go. Once they're in hell, they're trapped there. They can't leave ever again. So a lot of people think, you know, oh, Satan is from hell and he's a hellish being. But as far as I would imagine and can tell, you know, he's never been to hell because there's a chance that one day he'll be thrown in there. Of course, you know, he'll think that there's a chance, but we know that he will be. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I think that demons roam the earth. Uh, you, you never really see that they go to hell and then come back to earth or come up top. You know, it's always just they roam the earth. They look around or, uh, the devil is a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Uh, a demon will s- scour the world to look for a new home and come back to its original home. But it never depicts them as actually being in hell, except for a select few that may actually be in chains already. So, Oh. oh some of the, uh, the uh, terminology here are uh, goblins, gnomes, uh, Sprites, uh, the wee folk, which would be Irish folklore, uh, the good folk, uh, people of peace, the fairy folk, um, many terms that people have heard before. Uh, some of them are thought to be angelic beings, or some of them are considered to be trolls, which would lead me to believe more of a evil type uh, spirit, not a angelic type spirit um uh, they actually go back to germanic roots with elves uh english folklore uh french folklore uh you name it they've probably been in every culture that is known to us um they're also known as the Fae. Uh, that is a German 
term. Uh, there have been legends of fairies granting wishes. Uh, there have been stories of fairies granting wishes, but in a uh, deceitful way where it actually turns around on you, not the actual wish you wished for. Um, they are also linked to changelings. Uh, changelings are usually creatures that um, are sometimes, I don't know, if, are they linked to demons at all, changelings? Mm. Uh, not that I have come across. I don't know. I'd have to ask to look it up. Oh, okay. Here we go. Changelings are actually fairy children left in the place of a stolen human baby. Um, hmm. Older people could also be abducted. A woman who had just given birth and had yet to be churched was considered to be in particular in danger. A uh, common thread in folklore is that eating the fairy food would trap the captive as Persephone and Hades. Uh, this warning is often given to captives who escape by other people in the fairy's power, who are often described as captives who had eaten and so could not be freed. So fairies would capture humans by feeding them this, the fairy food and replace them with one of their own, basically, is what it's saying. Um huh. And the changeling kind of, not exactly, but it kind of sounds similar to a cambion where a demon has mated with a human being and had a type of offspring. But the difference here is is the creature is actually a fairy that switched with a, a human person. Hmm. Um, there's other legend, uh, legends for changelings, uh, looks like there was one that dates back to the 19th century. Uh, it's a child ballad called Lady Isabella and Elf Knight. The Elf Knight is a bluebeard figure, and Isabella must trick and kill him to preserve her life. Um, there's one called Tam Lin uh, that reveals that the title character, through living among the fairies and having fairy powers, was in fact an earthly knight, and though his life was pleasant, now, he feared that the fairies would pay him as their uh, tith to hell. And that legend right there almost makes you think demonic mm -hmm. entities. You know, it's, yeah. Um, there's a lot of literature. Uh, Morgan Le Fay, who was the uh, sworn enemy of Merlin, the grand wizard of the Knights of the Round Table. Uh, she was written into The Fairy Queen by Edmund Spencer. Uh, there's also a poet from the 15th century, uh, John Lydgate, that wrote about King Arthur. Um, and Morgan Le Fay is mentioned there. Uh, William Shakespeare wrote A Midsummer's Night Dream, uh, which is an amazing play, um, but it's all about the mischievous nature of fairies. Um, Alexander Pope wrote about fairies in The Rape of the Lock. Uh, they are in art. I mean, there are little statues today that you can still buy depicting fairies. Um, For them to be human spirits that got trapped here, which on a, a Christian scale doesn't happen anyways, but even from a mainstream view, a spirit that would morph into something other than what it originally was, to me, is nothing more than a legend. Um <clears throat> Different deities, again, that could be demons because there are most Christians that believe that pagan rituals are either linked to demons or are not of God. 
correct? Mm -hmm. Paganism is. Mm -hmm. Um, All right. So um, now you have a vague idea of what fairies are. If you guys don't know what fairies are, uh, we will be uh, taking our first break here. But if you guys have any questions, uh, any thoughts, because me and Eric, this is kind of a new subject for me and Eric. Uh, We may not be as educated as some. Uh, so if you want to call in 914-205-5558, you can also jump into our chat room at the bottom of your screen if you're listening on a computer and uh, put your question there and we'll get to it if, uh, or once we see it, sorry, not if. Um, You can also uh, find us on Facebook and Twitter. If you guys ever have questions, you can post them there. We will definitely answer you as soon as we see them. And uh, we also have our Indiegogo campaign still going. I I was misinformed last week. I thought we only had a week. We've got nine days left as of today. Uh, we are at 2% of our goal, and we are hoping that uh, we can get to 100%. So uh, definitely check that out. Uh, we will be right back after Eric's Random Fact and a few quick commercials. <laughs> Now, Eric's Random Facts of the Day. Did you know that the human tonsils can bounce higher than a rubber ball of similar weight and size? It's true, but only for the first 30 minutes after they have been removed. Peekaboo, peekaboo, smile. Smile, buddy. Come on, smile. Oh, honey, he's still not smiling. Maybe he's not a smiler. (sighs) Yeah, maybe he's just not a happy baby. Maybe he's just being a boy. You know how boys are. Or maybe he's teething. Oh, poor baby, I think his gums hurt. Maybe he's just tired. Or maybe his tummy hurts. He didn't eat that much. Maybe he's not ticklish. You think maybe he's scared of the dog? Maybe he'll outgrow it. Maybe it's a phase. Maybe he just doesn't like smiling. Maybe he has autism, and we can definitely do something to help. Maybe is all you need to find out more about autism. No big, joyful smiles by six months is one early sign. Learn the others at AutismSpeaks.org slash signs, or see a doctor today for an autism screening. The sooner it's diagnosed, the better, and it can make a lifetime of difference. Brought to you by Autism Speaks and the Ad Council. Hey kids, let mom help with your science project. This new mom wants her kids' science project to thrive. Too bad she hasn't cracked a science book since 1985. A metathesis reaction? Compound fixtures and elements, even this baking soda volcano is too big of an experiment. Whoa. Now she's completely forgotten the periodic table. Now she's burning a hole through the kitchen table. Burning with science. But her kids love for the mom. It's truly transparent. Proof you don't have to be perfect to be the perfect parent. Don't tell Dad. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of siblings in foster care will take you just as you are. For more information on how you can adopt, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A public service announcement from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt US Kids, and the Ad Council. Are you ready? Are you prepared? What if some cataclysmic event shook your every foundation? Would you and your family know what to do? My name is Jacqueline Druga, host of the Apocalypse Dennis Show. Join me every Thursday evening, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Prepper Broadcasting Network. Prepperbroadcasting.com, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. We're there for your survival needs. This is Bill Hall, author of the book, The World's Most Haunted House, and you're listening to Paratruth Radio. All right, folks, welcome back to Paratruth Radio. My name is Justin. And I'm Eric. And uh, as you just heard, we've been talking about fairies. Uh, 
for those of you that missed the beginning of the show, fairies are basically uh, spirits, spiritual in nature. Uh, some of them believe them to be spirits of the dead. Some of them believe to be demons. Uh, some of them are even to be, uh, to be believed as demoted pagan deities. Uh, a lot of... Uh, a lot of the the different legends here point to demonic type uh behavior tricking uh deceiving trying or making wishes come true but in the end bringing them back on you uh from a uh theoretical standpoint, do you think fairies could have just been uh, humans uh, trying to explain butterflies and weird things maybe just happening around when butterflies were around and they would link them to these creatures that they didn't know what they were? Yeah, I think it's possible. I mean, uh, I mean all folk- <clears throat> folklore, you know, as we've discussed in the past, uh, comes from some sort of truth. But unfortunately, I think a lot of it is uh, manufactured by, um, I guess, from human understanding or humans trying to understand something. And I think the whole idea of the butterfly, I mean, when you think of the butterfly in particular, it's a rather majestic type of creature. Uh, you know, without studying, you don't really much, know much about them. They're just pretty to look at. And so you think of very, and they're kind of designed you look at the pictures, just like a butter, they have this beauty factor, um, mm. almost in a sense where it draws your attention and um, almost mesmerizes you. And I don't know about you, but butterflies tend to do that to me sometimes because, you know, you just like this colorful thing flying around. Um, and yeah. the way they fly is interesting. So I think it's very possible that uh, the fairy was seen based on, you know, just, an, an, just some normal creature that got created, such as a butterfly. And uh, it's just something that came up and has been off since then to become what it is today. Well, you and I have talked about this extensively on multiple shows. I mean, this is another uh, creature that, to me, could be demonic in nature, as as you're saying, because of the different legends that are behind it. Um, And we've talked numerous times about how they can be seen as what you want or what they want you to see, excuse me. Um, Mm -hmm. Now, if they were trying to deceive and look like something beautiful, why choose a fairy over an angelic form or can they not do the angelic form anymore? Um, Demons are more than capable of pulling off the angelic form. Um, the scriptures say, and I know I've said this in the past, the scriptures say uh, the Satan himself masquerades an angel of light. Um, so, and we know that angels, even though their power is limited, or the demons, even though their power is limited, they still have the ability to appear as angels of light because they are originally angels. Um that's like if someone were to all right, so often we and this is not that this is off, but we think of people who have murdered someone, you know, and we call them monsters. Um but they're still human. You know, they're they're still the same thing that they were when they were born and demons are more or less the same thing. And even though they've taken this much darker turn and been cast out and fallen, they were still originally angels. Um but they're no longer in God's grace and God's presence and are no longer um, able to enter heaven. And they will suffer the rest of eternity because of their wickedness and what they did uh, to turn on God and uh, his commands. Um, <clears throat> but I think that when it comes to the whole fairy aspect, demons are very knowledgeable, knowledgeable to human understanding and what people like to perceive as magical beings, if you will, or what people will 
who's willing to worship. And so, you know, if a demon appears to a person as a demon, people aren't going to want to have any part of it. If they appear to people as angels, people are going to want to worship God. So they have to come up with something else. And in this case, they come up with fairies. Um, perhaps, you know, so in this case, they came up as, or showed up as fairies uh, as a way to pull people uh, into, um, into finding something new to worship uh, other than God and without scaring people uh, by making them see them as demons. If that makes sense. I mean, obviously, they're not going to appear as a demon unless there's a certain reason for them to do it. Well, I mean, for them to appear as a demon would just be a scare tactic, right? Um, usually, yeah. I mean, when you look at just the, just the stories um, that, that people write about or have talked about in regards to where they see demons, it usually is a scare factor type of thing. Uh, it, it's actually very rare that a demon is going to appear as a demon. Um, again, unless there's some kind of reason behind it uh, motivating them to do so. Because typically, when it comes to demons, when it comes to Satan, they want very, they want people to know very little about them. They don't want people to know that they exist. Because if people did truly believe that they exist, then they would start turning to God, uh, who can save them from those demons. So their whole goal is to deceive people into believing that Satan isn't real, but then also convince them that there's no such thing as God. Um, so yeah, I mean it can be used as a scare tactic, scare you know, scare factor if it's gonna further Satan's goal, I guess, into bringing that person low. One thing that uh, I was just reading here. Um it says here, dealing with fairies was in some cases considered a form of witchcraft, which I've seen numerous books about fairy magic. Um, so I I think that it is a good possibility that it's witchcraft in nature. Um, one of the uh, legends that is... Well, actually, it's not a legend. It's from a Midsummer's, Midsummer's Night's Dream... Uh, Oberon, who was the king of the fairies, uh, was actually carefully observed that neither he nor his court, or it was observed, sorry, that he and his court feared the church bells. Again, denoting a demonic type uh, creature over a, a spirit that has been changed after death or a, a separate spirit altogether other than uh, demons and angels. Um, mm -hmm. To me, though, I mean, yeah, a demon could, could deceive you and make themselves look something similar to this. Um, to me, the legends come from more something along the lines of trying to understand something that they didn't understand back in the day, which was uh, butterflies or, um, it, it, I mean, if most of them were supposed to be human size in nature, it could have been a, just a mis, uh, identification of somebody who was just wearing a costume and claimed to have these powers, but really didn't. And, when somebody believes something, of course it's coming true because they, they think it's all happening because of a spell by a fairy. So, mm -hmm. um, well, <clears throat> good. I mean, a demon doesn't, all right, so a demon doesn't have to become a fairy in order uh, to get people to believe in it. So if someone's going to assume or come up with the idea that fairies exist, Satan may take that belief and use it to his advantage by pushing people to believe in it so much that they begin to think of it as a god of sorts, as we see, um, as we see in the pagan deities, 
for example, uh, it, it's kind of similar to the Salem witch trials. And of course, there's a lot of different uh, interpretations of what exactly happened there. But I think the majority, considering how many people were murdered during the Salem witch trials, it's very possible that Satan used a scare tactic there to get everyone to turn on each other and start killing innocent people. Because I don't think everyone was actually a witch. I think people were so afraid that they just, they just started, you know, they had to find somebody that Escape was guilty them. so they could, yeah, you know, so they could kill them. And I think even though Satan himself didn't appear as a witch, one person or a group of girls in this case, um, uh, blamed it all on one woman and Satan said, you know what? I can turn this whole city against each other. And that's exactly what he did. The whole city fell apart because of that one, that first uh, accusation of a single witch, which turned into however many dozens, you know, of people that were murdered. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, just kind of like the werewolf and the vampire, I mean, fairies have been, as you said, romanticized and, brought into a more um, lighter side of what the myth mythology really is. I mean, the mythology clearly states that these were tricksters or uh, malevolent type creatures that were just out to hurt people. Um, mm -hmm. But, but um, you know, as you said, in Peter Pan, there's Tinkerbell, um trying to think of any other fictional creatures or fictional characters that were fairies other than the legend of Morgan Le Fay of course and um, the uh, the characters from A Midsummer's Night's Dream and I can't think of any offhand is there any other characters that you can think of that are linked to fairies yeah um, it's an old movie a cartoon can't think what it's called though um, but I'm going to see if I can look it up real quick. All right. Well, while you do that, let's take another quick break. Um, folks, you are listening to Paratruth Radio right here on Blog Talk Radio. Uh, we have your paranormal headlines as well as a couple more quick commercials, and we will be right back. And now, Paratruth Radio's Paranormal Headlines. Justin here with your paranormal headlines. Several people claim to have witnessed the notorious Slender Man in the area of Canuck Chase area of Staffordshire, England, where visitors have reported everything from poltergeist activity to sightings of black-eyed children. Several of the reports have centered around a witness seeing the figure in their bedroom at night and finding themselves unable to move or call for help. These particular similarities, however, could be evidence of something else entirely, the phenomenon known as sleep paralysis. The sheer number of such sightings occurring around the same time and within the same small area of the country, however, suggests that the reports cannot be quite so easily dismissed. This was a segment of Paratruth Radio's Paranormal Headlines. Okay, Simon, what are you wearing right now? Nothing. That's right. And what do people normally wear? Clothes. Exactly. So now Mommy's going to teach you how to dress yourself. Clothes keep us warm, they look good, and if we go out without them, the neighbors will talk. So it's important to know how to get dressed. Here's how it's done. Underwear always comes first, name tag at the back, then pants, then shirt. Get the first button in the right hole, or you have to start all over. If you're wearing a tie, it goes over, round, round, through, and pull tight. Tuck your shirt into your pants and zip up your flap. Socks go in first, then shoes right on right, left on left. With shoelaces, just take the ends, cross them over, switch the loops. The rabbit goes down the hole, pull tight, and left with bunny ears. I love bunnies. Good to know. Now remember, spots don't go with stripes, socks don't go with sandals, and if you've tucked in your shirt, wear a belt. Got it? Why are your pants on your head? Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. But spending just two minutes twice a day making sure they brush their teeth is easier and could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. 
For fun two-minute videos to watch while brushing, visit 2men2x.org. That's 2men2x.org. A message from the Partnership for Healthy Miles, Healthy Lives, and the Ag Council. Okay, forest animals, today is a new day. Kids are coming to the forest, and it's up to us to make their visit a good one. Sparrow. Yes? Have you practiced the most popular bird songs for the year? Of course. Catchy. I like it. Okay, river. Dude. How's the temperature? It's a refreshing 52 degrees, man. Perfect for a little riverside shoeless relaxation. Ah, good. Owl, you hear? Of course. Who, who's asking? I am. Look, you know the drill. Sleep during the day, scare the kids at night. Perfect. I love my job. Uh, oak tree? Stop. Still in the same place I left you last year. That's what I like. Consistency. Well, it's not like I'm going anywhere for the next couple hundred years. I know. I love it. Uh, turtle. Turtle. He's not here yet, man. Ugh, he's late every morning. You'd think he would have learned by now to leave the night before our meetings. Okay. Squirrel. Has anybody seen Mr. Squirrel? The forest has been preparing just for you. Visit a forest near you today. To learn more about cool things to do in the forest, visit discovertheforest.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. Ladies and gentlemen, sublimely elegant here as always, and you are listening to... Welcome back, everybody! All right, folks, welcome back to Parrot Truth Radio right here on Blog Talk Radio. My name's Justin. And I'm Eric. All right, and did you find that character you were looking for? Fern Gully. Oh, that's right. Fern Gully was completely based on fairies. Mm-hmm. And I believe was one of your favorites, correct? Yeah, we used to watch it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, uh, for those of you that are just joining us, uh, today we are talking about... Fairies! <laughs> you did a really good job with that, by the way. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, folks, uh, if you're just tuning in, uh, fairies are linked to uh, mischievous spirits, uh some legends are uh, that uh, they are demonic in nature. Um, they link to several different uh, stories and legends. They go back to King Arthur. They go back to uh, the uh, um, William Shakespeare's Midsummer's Night Dream. Uh, actually... They go back to several other um, authors, Rudyard Kipling, uh, Sir Walter Scott, and James Hogg, uh, C.S. Lewis's Narnia series. Uh, I actually didn't even think about that. The Fawns and the Dryads are actually considered to be fairy folk. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't realize this, but giants are actually supposed to be part of the fairy folk. So maybe that's where the larger than humans that you've heard of comes into play is they're, they're linked to giants as well. Um, yeah. And um, I mean, they even date back to medieval times and I'm sure way before that. Uh, if I had to put a peg on what a fairy is um to me it's nothing more than a creature that was made up in mythology to explain something uh is it possible that they are something more maybe they are demons trying to deceive us sure it's a possibility uh to me um i i just think it was one person's way of explaining something they've never seen before and it kind of flew from there. Um what what's your take from all of it, Eric? Um uh I, I kinda of take both sides because uh, I go along with I'm gonna agree with what you said, but I'm also gonna say suggest that if someone sees fairies or believes fairies to be a real thing, uh and I know there's people out there who claim to have seen fairies and stuff like that. I think it becomes more of a demonic nature uh, because uh, demons are simply going to use it to their advantage. Now, yep. 
do you think that because like I said, it's also linked to witchcraft and to um, there are books called uh, talking about fairy magic. Um, could it be linked to witchcraft? People kind of summoning these demons and using them to to appear as fairies. Do you think? Um. Well. Even though, though know, people that, can't really control a demon, but you know what I mean. They say, summon demons to yeah. try to. Yeah, okay. That's what I was about to say. It depends on what you mean by summon. Um, <laughs> if, I mean, it's the magical, uh, what is it, incantation? Is that what it's called? In- incantation. Incantation. If the magical incantation uh, is to summon a fairy... Then, yeah, I think, you know, obviously a demon is going to appear as a fairy and, you know, the people summoning it and who witness it and, you know, try to get it to do its bidding or their bidding uh, isn't going to know the difference. Yeah, I I, I, a demon is going to appear as it wants to appear, needs to appear to further its, you know, goal. Yeah, I... If I were to lean towards anything other than uh, somebody trying to just explain it, I would say that uh, they are very much like demons in nature where they're very mischievous creatures. Uh, Like I said, they tend to be pictured as uh, granting wishes, but in the end... um, it's kind of turned back on you for your wish. Um, Rumpelstiltskin is another character from folklore who is very much like a, a fairy type figure, a, a short stout figure who uh, tries to uh, get the the queen or soon to be queen uh, her trust and does everything to help her and he wants her unborn child. Um, And to me, that sounds like what you would hear about fairies or pixies or sprites, whatever creature of legend you hear about. um, It to me is very close. So, um, I think that's what we we both chalk it up to as this is one of very few that uh, me and Eric see eye to eye on. I mean, there are plenty that we do, but um, to me, these creatures can't be anything other than either demonic in nature or something that people were trying to explain and it kind of rolled from there. Um mm-hmm. So, um, folks, if you're listening in live, uh, if you have any insights, uh, 914-205-5558. We've got roughly about 15 minutes left um, to go. Uh, You can join us in our chat room as well. Uh, You just go down to the bottom of your screen and uh, just hop in chat, and you can put your question in there. Uh, If you guys ever have any questions outside of airtime for us, uh, you can hop on our Facebook page and put it right on our wall there. Um, you can also hit us up on Twitter as well. And when you're on both of those sites, hit the like and follow buttons. Um, and we also do have our Indiegogo campaign still going. Uh, if you are on the computer, it is in our chat room there. I will also be putting it in the comments of the uh, podcast. Um So the uh, the Super Bowl was today. Um, is it still going? It is, yes. Third uh, Who, third quarter. <clears throat> who's winning right now? Uh, Seahawks, seventeen Seahawks. to fourteen. Maybe they have fairy influence. <laughs> <laughs> some of the, some of these football players, I believe it. <laughs> Smacking each other's butts. <laughs> 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 um <laughs> all right um 
one thing I wanted to ask you because we love talking about this on air is um have you been still keeping up with Supernatural? Of course I have. It's one of the very <laughs> few shows that I'm keeping up on. I I, I stopped watching some shows just cuz it was too much. <laughs> too many oh. shows. <laughs> How's that storyline going? Is it looking like this is going to be the final season or are they leading it oh, no. into another season? No, they already got yeah, they've already been okayed for an 11th season uh, a couple of months ago, or a month ago or so. <sighs> yeah, I was a little disappointed. <laughs> but, oh, well. Just because you can't get out of that funk of your life because they keep going with it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but, um, it's going to be 29 in March. So I've been watching this show since I was mm, 20. No, 19. <laughs> so I was 19. So, uh, yeah, it's been a long time. I've dedicated a lot of my life to this show. <laughs> Jeez. And I want it to end so I could be like, come on, just end it on a good note already and don't. All you know, right. Yeah. Well, they tried up. to end it on a good note when you and I were watching it together and, you know, Dean was actually going to have a decent life after everything. And then it just kept going. Mm hmm. Well, I still tell everyone to this day that if you, if you want to watch Supernatural, season five is where it ends. Everything else is just bonus and really has no part of the story. Right. So if you watch through the fifth season, that's, that's Supernatural. Yeah. Um, all right, folks. I think that's all we've got for you today. Um, it, fairy is very basic, a very basic uh, creature. I mean, we have talked to uh, people um about fairies um oh god I, her name is escaping me now and i it's at the tip of my tongue um i can't remember it was one of our guests that we had on uh she was talking about the banshee and she was talking about mm. oh god what the hell is her name yeah what is her name barla ventura nah that's it yep she was a uh very very good guest um so um, next week we will be having on uh, David Montaigne. He is the author of End Times and 2019. Uh, on the 15th, we will also, or I shouldn't say also be having, we'll be having on Linda Godfrey. Uh, she's the author of American Monsters. Um, definitely two books to to look at. Um, Eric has talked numerous times on our show about uh, how the signs of end times are actually here. Um, to me, a lot of times I can believe that just through different things that are happening. Uh, but at the same time, I'm not a hundred percent sure if that's what's happening or if people are just evil mm -hmm. in nature. I, I don't know. Um, but, uh, also American monsters is a book that, uh, kind of covers cryptids, sightings of cryptids, that sort of thing. Uh, and Linda will definitely be a good fit for our show as well. So definitely stay tuned for the next couple of weeks. Uh, if you guys have time and have uh, some funds to help us get to our goal for our Indiegogo, Indiegogo campaign, uh, check out the Indiegogo campaign. We have a very nice video for you guys to uh, look at and it shares with you what ben what uh, perks you guys will get uh, donating from ten dollars all the way up to two hundred fifty dollars, but you can uh, donate as little as a dollar. Um, on that note, uh, I think we are done for the evening. Uh, my name's Justin, and I'm Eric, and we will talk to you guys next week. Peace.